So I've got OCU Manure, the reason I wore number 72. Well, there were other reasons. Like, mm. There were no other fucking numbers available, but like I was like, well, OC made it look cool. Maybe I could. Uh, OC's here. He's joining us from London. Obviously, he just met Macon, who's, a, who's the in-house Giants fan, and his old teammate. And oh what, did, what did you call Dr. Fax, as we call him? What did you call him? Big Nasty Nate? Big Nasty Nate. You got to say just like that. You can't just say Big Nate. You say Big Nasty Nate. That's my guy, OC, man. I used to have to bring OC gummy bears before every team oh, meeting. Yeah. Every team, oh, yeah. that was that was my rookie duty. It wasn't it wasn't bad. <laughs> I, I took it on the chin, but I thought about it later. I was like, I see what they do to rookies, and I was like, hey, that actually wasn't that bad. So could, I always it respect it. It could have been, been way worse. Could have been worse. <laughs> a lot been worse, man. But Nate, Nate was just the he was just the best, man. Just a good guy, you know. <laughs> He's smiling. Um, all fun the time. guy to be around. Yeah, yeah, He's yeah, smiling. yeah. Nate's cool. Nate's cool. That's cool because yesterday when we were on the river, uh, you said. Uh, I said, OC, I'm booking him for the show tomorrow. He's like, I don't know if OC would remember me. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. But then I said, no, OC With would remember With a name me. like that? <laughs> um, OC, OC. So, so last week, me and Dr. Fax here, we mm. broke down the verses between the locks and dip set. Now, I know mm. you guys used mm. to do the fadeaway mm. and Freddie Robbins yeah. was back there. Chucking up, yeah. chucking up 30 footers after sacks. And you guys had the whole thing. But is it yep. hard for you to admit that Dipset took a massive L the other night? Oh, they took an L. They took an L. I think there's no, <laughs> that's really no question about that, man. I mean, what what the locks did with Sheik Looch and Jada Kiss, it, it, it was just different level, man. But shout out to Dipset. Yeah. Dipset are my guys, man. Yeah. That's one of my guys. I mean, speaking of that, that fadeaway thing, don't let anybody tell you anything different. That ball in celebration, that was my idea, Chris. Oh, that's, that's yeah. from my claim head. it. Claim yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. No, no, it's, oh, the, it's the truth. It's the truth. It's the truth, man. And then Jim Jones went back. He made a song about the New York Giants. He made the remix of the ball in, called it ball in part two, put all our names in there. You guys don't know nothing about that. What about the royalties? Do you get get royalties, OC? Zero royalties. That's fucked Zero. Up. And we blew that song up. We <laughs> blew that song definitely, up. So, definitely blew, blew that it song up. up. All right, so Giants camp. We're talking Giants here. They made a lot of news because... And we knew, I played for New England, like we all know that they're tough and Joe Judge is tough. I mean, he comes from that cloth. Mm. A lot of those coaches try to imitate what Bill does up there, but the push-ups, the laps, where do you stand? Because you had a tough coach in Coughlin. Like I, yeah. I would assume you'd rather do a Joe Judge camp than a Coughlin camp. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. I, I think, you know, the one thing is, I, I got a chance to spend some time up there with Joe um, last week. Uh, He's a good guy, just a good, solid individual. Like, if you ever spend some time with him, he's young, he's energetic, he's really respectful of, like, people. So everything that you see on the outside is the same thing I was seeing. But when I got there and I got a chance to spend some time with him, I would have loved to play with the dude, man. Just straight up honest, looks you dead in your eyes. This is what he expects. And I think nowadays, man, I hate to be that old, you know, grumpy guy, man, but people are just so soft nowadays, man. I kind of... I kind of like what what he's doing, man. I like what he's bringing. I I appreciate that kind of stuff. The only thing that I feel bad for, and we said this on this show, like I've actually been a fan of the hire. I mean, I think the quarterback has to play well. That's the bottom line because they Mm. got a lot out of that defense relative to the talent level they had. The coordinator on defense did a great job. Um, but the quarterback has to play well. I just am not a fan of making coaches run laps. And I've never felt bad for Mm. coaches before. (laughs) Like generally. But it, I'm kind of like, man, like if I was a coach, I don't know how I would take that. That's the only thing. Yeah, yeah, I, I can see how that would be a problem, man. But, bro, I got to be honest, like they buy, they buy into him. Like yeah. the team, it's not like a, it's not like a divider or anything like that, man. They are behind that guy. Yeah. And so, yeah, I think it's going to work out well for him. I really do. Can't Zero. work out any worse. Zero retirements so far this, this week. week. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Oh, so, hey, he said, hey, OC, did you ever come close to retiring during camp? No, 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 no. I think, I think, I think maybe like, I remember one time. This was when I was with the Falcons, um, not when I was with the Giants. I remember, I remember walking out there. It was like year eleven. And it was hot. They were hitting those. It was hitting those dummies. And I was like, "Man, what the fuck am I doing here, man?" <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, yeah. "I'm old. My body's beat up. The coaches is yelling. I'm like, I, I don't, I don't need this anymore, man." So yeah. 
that was the only time I can I can remember specifically thinking to myself, I, I need to go sit down somewhere. But other than that, though, not really. That's funny. I had the 11 ear itch, too. It was the physical, <laughs> the line at physicals, year 11 for me. I said, I think yeah. I stayed a year too long. <laughs> did, did yours happen to involve Devontae Freeman? No, all? it didn't. But then, so, no, so, so I hear you, I hear you roughed up Devontae <laughs> Freeman in Atlanta. So who lifted Devontae Freeman higher in the air, you or Aaron Donald? <laughs> Listen. Listen, man, that, that story, that, that Devontae Freeman story was crazy, bro. Crazy, <laughs> crazy story, man. Um, It was just, just the way the whole thing went down, bro. And I think you'll understand this. So we were in, in, um, we were in training camp, right? And, you know, running backs aren't really supposed to chip you in, in <laughs> practice. <Yeah>. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. So, yeah, so yeah, he's a rookie at the time. Maybe he had no clue who I was. I, I, as a matter of fact, I don't think he did. So we're in practice, and the man just comes out the backfield, just chips me, boom, runs down the field. And so I walk up to him as he's walking back. I'm like, yo, like, what are we doing? He's like, shut the fuck up. You ain't going to do shit. Who the fuck you think you are? I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my God. What, what the hell happened? So now here's the funny thing, though, Chris is oh. like, I, like I'm a veteran, right? So I was actually going to let that slide. And so as I turned to the sideline to walk to the sideline, I saw a guy by the name of Jonathan Massacoy. Now, Massacoy was like behind me. He was my understudy. And so when I looked at him, I saw he was looking at both of us. And he looked at me dead in my eye. He was like, yeah, Os, he was talking to you. I said, oh, man, I got I to I gotta, I gotta address the situation, right? I guess I got to address the situation right now because yeah. if I don't address the situation, that's it for me. So I'm like, damn, what am I going to do, man? So I, I went, I sat down, I took a knee and he went back to the other side of the field. And the whole time I'm just thinking to myself, I'm like, man, I got to go. I got to go. I got to go handle this right now. <laughs> so like, you know, the end zone camera, yeah. you know, that little end zone camera. So you just see me walking across, <laughs> the end, across just to go see him. right? Briskly. And I went to go see it. Yeah. So I was like, <laughs> Hey, Devontae. And as soon as I walked to him, he was like, shut the up. I was like, okay, cool. It just, it just, it just kicked off from there, man. It just kicked off. And the one thing I remember is Matt Ryan came to me after that. He was like, damn, Osa, I didn't even know you had that in you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> hey, here's the thing. The hardest time to fight somebody in the NFL is after it's kind of calmed down for a second. Like, You're right. So the fact that you had to reset and you know, it's a thing is like, it's almost like, even if I can let it slide personally, I can't let that slide in front of everybody else. No, 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 no. It's no like chance. there's just no, no way. What What was Coughlin's deal with fights? Because he was really tough, and I, it was the old NFL. Yeah. Like, how did Coughlin handle fights? Yeah, it was the same thing. It was just basically, you know, he would throw you out of practice, or he didn't, he didn't like that stuff at all, you know. Um, but back then, it was just – like fights were just, it's like a normal thing to see during training camps. I mean, I remember seeing like people fighting next to me and I'm like, you know, I'm just, I'm just on a knee. It didn't, it didn't really bother us to see fights because it will happen so frequently. So, um, Coughlin for sure. He didn't like the, he didn't like fights at all. We had people that got kicked out of practice intentionally in St. Louis. <laughs> I don't know if you ever had anybody that was like, man, it's hot. Like we should fight. You know what I mean? Kick like, it off. And, and it was like, <laughs> yeah. get the fuck out of here is gladly. Um, <laughs> and then there's a big code with one on one pass rush. Oh my if God. If you get caught on film and an offensive lineman and a defensive lineman are fighting, I don't care if it's like an undrafted rookie, you at least have to make an effort on film to get jump. towards the thing, <laughs> to get you towards the jump. fight. And everybody plays this game. It's like, <laughs> All right, if I just run five steps, it's going to be broken up by the time. But when you get there and they're still throwing haymakers, you're like, I don't know what it's to do, like, dude. It's like the Jalen, the fake, hold, hold me back. Hold me back, exactly. So, oh, so Hard Knocks, was that intrusive? Yeah, like, you're a smart vet at this point in your career. Like, you're not going to get fooled on anything. But, like, was there, were they trying to fool people? Is it intrusive? Is it tricky? Yeah, it, it's a little intrusive. It's not It's not too bad, honestly. Yeah. They try to go out of their way to make it seem like they're not there, but they are there. Yeah. And the funny thing to me was, like, you, you're, you're sitting there, and it's actually going on while training camp is going on. So, like, you're watching Hard Knocks, and you're seeing what had happened <laughs> the previous week, right? Yeah. You're seeing people, like, get cut. You're seeing everything that the coaches have said about you, and you have to go in and actually, you know, practice – during training camp, it's a really weird 
vibe because it's not like it's airing like a year after or a couple of months after. It's airing while training camp is still going on. It, it's um, it's it's a weird thing to be to be involved in for sure. Are there cameras that are hidden that you can't even see? Yeah, yeah, there are. They put them all up in like you know the roof, and then you know sometimes they have steady cameras there. And a lot, it's not just like you know cameras all up in your face like this. It's not like that at all. They're positioned far away. Sometimes you can't even see them. That's a scary deal. That's a scary deal. Preseason. When I think about preseason, the first thing that I always have in my head, like as ammunition, when I want to tell somebody to shorten preseason, is like, well, one of my favorite players tore his ACL in preseason. Case closed. Mm. We should shorten that shit. Talk to me yeah. about how tough that was uh, and how it happened. Yeah, yeah, that, that was um, that was really tough. We're coming off a Super Bowl, actually. Um, just made my second Pro Bowl. I'm going in. I'm like, you know, I'm prime at this time, prime OC. And um, just a routine play. We're playing against the Jets. It's the third preseason game. Uh, I actually felt probably the best I'd ever felt in my career at this point. Like I, I was on it and I came, I come off the edge. I do like a little sweep and I try to come back under against the British show Ferguson and my knee just kind of like, like just buckled. Yeah. And so I lay down on the floor and I tried to get up and I realized at that point I couldn't straighten my knee out. Like the, the, the cartilage had torn. And then when it tore, it flipped into like my joint. So my knee was like locked for like a couple of days and um, so I, I remember going in to uh, see, you know, the doctor and he's like, yeah, he just pulled me to the side. He's like, yeah, wh what we're going to do is we're going to um, we're going to open your knee up. We're going to remove the cartilage and then we're going to sew it back down. And he's like, yeah, you're going to miss the season. And he, he just said it so nonchalant. you know, so nonchalantly. And I, and I was just like, yeah, OK, cool, cool, cool. But I, it didn't register what he had said to me at the point. And so after I was like, how long am I going to miss? Like four to six weeks? He's like, no, no, no. You're done for the season. And I couldn't understand, you know, what he was talking about at that point in time because I had never missed any time or any significant time due to injury at that at, at that period. So missing that whole year after, you know, we won the Super Bowl and then the Giants, they went on, they were balling that year too. Probably yeah. had like the best season uh, outside of the Super Bowl years and just missing all of that was, honestly, Chris, it was devastating. I hated it. The preseason and people talk about mm. shortening it or what we need to do with it. Are you somebody that takes your personal experience and says, hey, we got to cut this thing in half. It's too risky. Like, what's the ideal preseason look like if you're the commissioner of the NFL? Yeah. That's a tough one for me, man, because like I felt like in a lot of instances, the younger I was, the more I needed preseason. Yeah. But like as I got a little bit older, I didn't really quite need it so much. But then there are a lot of guys who are young who need those reps and they need to go out there and, and you know, actually practice and perform and go up against other people and show what they can do. Right. And the more opportunities you get to do that, the better, the better it is for you. So it's like two different OCs can speak as, as, as the veteran OC, I'm like, man, what are we doing this for? We need maybe like one or two games. But as the younger OC, there was a lot of times that I, I knew for a fact I needed that preseason. Um, to hone my skills before the regular season and to actually show what I was capable of. So it's uh, it's tough, man. I, I think, you know, different people are going to have different answers for that question, yeah. depending on what stage they're in in their career. Absolutely. I think about, like, you in Atlanta or, like, year 10 in, in New York, like, you know, and I, yeah. I feel the same way. It's like, hey, listen, I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I want all the reps I can get in a controlled environment, but out here I can't control somebody falling on my leg. I can't control yeah. something freakish happening, which can happen in practice, but it's just the live bullets of a preseason game, which is chaos anyways. It, you know, it's always conducive to somebody getting hurt. So, Nate. Like Osi said, for a guy like me that was on the bottom end of a roster, you love those preseason reps and you need those reps. Yeah. Like it's, and it's really, for you, it, it might be the only time you really get a chance to put anything on tape like at all, like for your career. So it's something where you got to take those reps seriously and you got to sometime, like if you're smart, you're scratching and clawing for those reps. Yeah, no, and, and listen, that's the reason why I don't throw a fit over it because there are so many young guys that are that are hustling way harder than me and haven't gotten theirs, theirs yet. So like the inconvenience of me playing another football game or two, it sucks, but I get the whole deal. You did, You only had one offer going to Troy? So, like, I'm yeah, sure yeah, you, yeah. you're kind of used to having to t take advantage of every opportunity. Yeah. <clears throat> I didn't even get an offer to go to Troy. Really? You know, it was a no, 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 no. Yeah. Man, I got I got to tell you this story now. This is probably the craziest story 
you've ever heard about how I got into college. Okay. So I'm I'm in I'm at Auburn High School. I uh, played my senior year in high school. I wasn't particularly good because I only really played that one year. I came from Nigeria, um, so I didn't really play football up up until I was 15. So I played one year of high school football, really, which is my senior year. I'm done. Uh, no scholarship offers. No colleges came to see me. We were one and nine. You know, as a team, we were a terrible football team. And to be completely honest, I wasn't really good. I really wasn't a good player. I was just athletic. So I am I had this car that my sister had given me. So I'm driving her car to school every day. I already had my driver's license. And I was supposed to go to um, in school. I was supposed to go to um, this class called driver's education in high school. But I already had like my driver's license. So I was like, what am I? I'm not going to driver's ed when I got my driver's license. It didn't make any sense. So I, right. I wasn't going. So I would come to school at, at like nine o'clock, even though I was supposed to be there at like eight to take this class. And so one day I come to school and then they pull me to the principal's office. They're like, listen, you know, you're supposed to be in this class and you're not going. So because of that, we're going to punish you. You're going to go to in-school suspension. And I'd never heard of this before because I I'd never gotten in trouble. So I was like, all right, cool. So I had two weeks of in-school suspension. Ooh. The first day I go to in-school suspension, the guy who's running in-school suspension is a guy by the name of Coach James Joseph. Now, he's the running backs coach of the high school. And as soon as I walk in there, he's like, see, what are you doing in here? I'm like, man, I'm in in-school suspension. He was like, so what are you going to do with your life now? I'm like, listen, I came here to, to America to go to school, so I'm just going to find my way to, to go to college and, you know, see what happens. He was like, man, a kid your size, man, you need to do something with your athleticism, man. You eat. You might have a future playing football. I'm like, okay. He was like, you know what? I'm going to do something. For you. I'm going to call one of my friends. Um, and the guy just saw his name was Tracy Rocky. He was a defensive line coach. He played with James Joseph at Auburn. Oh, okay. So he was like, I'm going to call Tracy for you. Uh, and so he called Tracy Rocker. And Tracy, for some reason, was in Auburn at the time visiting his parents. And it was like, listen, I got this kid named OC, you know, big African kid. You need to come see this guy, man. He's an athlete. So Tracy was like, okay, cool. I'm going to come see him right now. So he <laughs> left his parents' house, right? He left his parents' house and he drove to Auburn High School where I was in in-school suspension. Right. And he's like, oh, man, you are a big kid, man. He's throwing some tape. He was like, man, you damn sure don't know what you're doing. He's like, can you run? I was <laughs> like, yeah, I can, can run. You I'm run? fast. <laughs> right. I, I was yeah. like, I'm fast. That's what I do for a living. I can run. He's yeah. like, all right, let's go see what you got. He took me outside. Uh, time me in the 40. I think I ran like a 485 at the time, but I was like 270, right? That's really good. So he was like, you were big in right, high school. Fresh out of in school. Oh, I was big. I was big. I thought I was school. big in yeah. high school. Holy shit. Yeah. Did you wait 270 in the league? No. Uh, no, I dropped down. Yeah, they, I dropped down. Was like, I saw him yeah. win every day. Yeah, I dropped down. But you know, I played, I was a D tackle and then I was a nose guard in college yeah. Before, yeah. I moved, before I moved yeah. up. Yeah. yeah. So, so now Tracy's like, Man, you know, you, you can run, man. So he's like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to call my head coach, Larry Blakeney. And so he called Larry Blakeney. He's like, man, we got this African kid. They kept on calling me the African kid. He's like, <laughs> we got this African kid here, right? The guy's big, you know, seems to be a nice guy. He can run. We need defensive linemen. Right. And Blakeney was like, yeah, go ahead, offer him. So they offered me a scholarship. This all <laughs> took like three hours, I promise you. <laughs> I shit you not. This took like three hours Hey, from me stepping into in-school suspension. So, <laughs> I had a scholarship so, to go to Troy. So you... You're outside in school suspension running a 40, five, running five a 40. yards outside right. the in school suspension. <laughs> what if you think happens if you don't get in school suspension? You see, this is the funny thing about life, right? Yeah. It's the funny thing about life. Like, <laughs> I'm here right now discussing with you, went through all of that simply because I decided I don't want to take the fucking driver's head. I'm just going <laughs> to. That's gonna, good, though. <laughs> and this is where we are right now. That's damn good. Because of that decision. That's crazy. So, so hold up. Did you end up having to take the driver's head course? Hell no. <laughs> yeah. I still didn't take that course. <laughs> hey, uh, you know, not just this, but like the whole thing for people, a lot of people that watch OC. You know, people know he's from London, uh, but Nigerian. Mm. That's Nigerian. very. That's not normal for N the NFL. Like, there's only a few players with British accents that I ever played with. You know, there's only you know Jay Ajay was one. There's yeah, only a yeah. couple guys in the league that come from there. So it's just crazy to beat all the odds that you beat in so many ways. What do you think the key is in in finding talent in London and in the UK? Mm. I mean, and what's going on with the game there? 
Well, I mean, the thing is, most of the talent that comes from London is really from Nigeria. Yeah. Um, so it's, that's really <laughs> that's really what the that's really what the situation is. You talk about Jay, Ajay, or yeah. Ajay, or Bali, yeah, or myself. Yeah. Yeah. We're all Nigerian. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but but the game the game is 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 big here, man. All the games out here. We started with one game. We're at four games. Well, this year two games because of COVID. Yeah. But all the games are sold out. And what you would see is like everybody from Europe will descend on, on London for these games because it's their first opportunity to actually see live games and to see the NFL. And they, they love it out here. Yeah. And so there's a lot of fans. There's a lot of people who are really into the game. And it's like, it, it, you got to be like dedicated because before we came out here, there really wasn't that much, you know, things on TV to watch. You had to like go online or you had to stay up to, to all, all hours of the night trying to watch the games. Yeah. But um, these guys are like dedicated fans. And so, you know, the game keeps growing out here, finding talent. I think, you know, there is some talent out here, but most of the talent here is really from Nigeria. They're really from Africa anyway. So, yeah, you know, that's the situation. I mean, as far as like, you know, football in London's concerned, are you bummed out that most people seem to be Jacksonville Jaguars fans? There's so many hey, better <laughs> NFL experiences. No offense, ex, mate. Ex Jags player here. <laughs> listen, listen, the, the, Jag, the Jags have laid, they've laid the groundwork, man. They've been out here yeah. for years, like putting in work, putting in work, putting in work. So, I mean, it, it has to be their Dude, team. Dude, we went out and played the Jags a year removed from the Super Bowl with the Eagles, and people were like, fuck the Eagles, the Jags are here. I was like, excuse me? That's the squad. But you know what? It was awesome. Like, the buzz is great. And it's so fun playing in these big, iconic soccer stadiums that for us, like, we see, when we see soccer played, it feels like a big deal. And to be in that stadium, mm. it's really cool. It's a different take. Although the grass is way different. And I know you're a big football yeah. fan. But, uh, like, one thing we notice when we get there, it's so slippery. But they like the pitch a little slick, don't they? Mm, yeah, so they can run faster. It makes the ball skip faster. Yeah, yeah. You know, kind of like, you know, when I was playing against you in FIFA, we're not going to talk about that here. <laughs> uh, how the ball was, how the ball hey, was skipping. Ask it. Was skipping fast, Chris. Well, there's a food, there's a food <laughs> chain here because I dust him off with regularity when we used to play. Not true. What is the history here? How many times have you played? Well, I mean, I blacked out. I might have played okay. once or twice. I think I blacked maybe out. Maybe he, beat me, though. he beat me. Okay. You know, it's kind of cheating when you're like literally like you live in London. I mean, it's just you unfair. Live there. You know all the rules. I don't know all the rules. I'm, gonna, I'm just hitting the buttons. I'm going to bypass your dragging my FIFA skills and connect the two dots about your route to the NFL before we leave it. Uh, London, England to mm. Auburn, Alabama. Nigeria. I don't know if there are two more disparate locales on planet mm. Earth. Was it a culture mm. shock going to Auburn? And, and why not return to beautiful Auburn, Alabama after your decorated career <laughs> and, instead of London, yeah. England? <laughs> yeah, I think, I think the only culture shock was people would ask me, you know, uh, well, because I went from London to Nigeria, then from Nigeria yeah. to... Um, Auburn, Alabama. Yep. And so um, a lot of people would ask me when I left Nigeria and I got to Auburn, they'd be like, man, did you did you guys speak English? I'm like, yeah, yeah, we spoke English. I, I don't know what they were speaking in Auburn, Alabama because <laughs> for sure, for sure that wasn't English. <laughs> they were speaking, I don't know what language that was. They are speaking something completely different. But it, it, it was a culture shock. It was a complete culture shock. The only thing we saw in Nigeria of America was like Baywatch and Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and oh, that's you know, all those type of things. That's yeah, interesting. So, Chris Auburn, that's just not that's not what we saw on on television, but the, right? The so, lead uh, the lead here is that Baywatch is being consumed in Nigeria. Oh, for sure, for sure. <laughs> Baywatch is 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 heavy, uh, heavy in the streets. <laughs> it's heavy in the streets. <laughs> so, what's going on with football in Nigeria? What's going on with football in West yeah. Africa? Like. What's the future of our game as it like Oof. branches out internationally? Because as you said, there's so many great athletes, you know, there's mm. such an exciting opportunity to grow it. How is it wow. now? And where do you see it in 10, 15 years in West Africa? I'm glad you're talking about this. I wasn't going to say anything, but be on the lookout really, really soon for NFL Africa. You heard it here first, Chris Long. Ooh. You guys heard it here first. Be on the lookout. And I'm talking about within the next couple of months, man. We're working on something really, really spectacular here. And um, you, you're, you're going to see this is great. an influx of talent from uh, from Africa, uh, Western Africa to be specific. But we're hosting, it's, it's, there's a lot going on. You know, they say don't, don't you know, expose everything before it's actually happened. But you guys are hearing this first 
That's great. First from my mouth here, That's NFL awesome. Africa is hey. coming. And we, need, we, need a te- we need a team Tanzania because now, yeah. you know, uh, OC's been to water Tanzania. Boys. Now, yeah, water boys. You climb Kelly uh, yeah. for uh, British TV or what was it? It was a charity yeah. thing? Yeah. Yeah, it was charity. It was charity. Cl- climbed on Kilimanjaro. I got <laughs> be, honest, <laughs> be, be honest. Be honest, be honest, OC. How how hard was that? Oh, I, I'll say this. Summit night. Summit night was the hardest. That was the hardest thing I've ever done in my that's, life. Summit that's night exactly was, right. And, that, and that's when that's summit when, night was that's the when you're coming down. Night. So so no 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 going up going and up. coming down. Well, going down yeah. and, going down is like. You're just racing down the mountain and you can't get right. down quick enough because you just want more air. Like your head hurts. Like yeah. and, and and you're basically running down the side of the mountain, risking yeah. injury to and just get sand. down. Yeah. In the sand, in the shale, down. in that big shale uh, hill. But yeah, no, yeah. Summit Night's the hardest thing in the world. And it was funny yeah. afterwards, he texted me, he was like, Chris, this is a motherfucker. <laughs> he was like, I don't even know. I'm scared of it. Yeah, so Nate might go in here. Ooh, listen, I, I, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you, I'll tell you this. No, I'll tell you this, I'll tell you this. I got to be honest. Yeah. It's, it's, it's an experience because once you do it, you realize what, you, what you're capable of. You realize what you can do, yep. like what you can tell your yep. mind to do. Because, you know, that's something that the other night, the other days are hard. But that's something that as you're going up and you're looking at all you're seeing is like lights. It seems like the lights are going all the way up into the sky and you just got to, you just got to keep climbing and everything in you is, is telling you, yo, you got to what the fuck are sit you doing, down man? You somewhere, got, dude. You like, got to sit down somewhere, man. But, but when you sit, you can't you get back going. up. And it's so dark. That's one of the hardest things is like in football or in anything, like we're used to seeing where the goal is. You know what the goal is. But from midnight to 10 a.m., you you really don't see the goal. And in fact, when you get over the rim of the volcano, you're not done yet. It's a false summit. You're not done yet. <laughs> so you got people crying and saying, like, we made it. And they're like, wait, where's the summit? They're like, nah. uh, it's like up there. It's like another two yeah, hours. Yeah, like three hours left. Yeah. So it's tough. <laughs> Haloti Nada went with us two years ago, and he oh. retired on the top. And I made the mistake oh, of saying, man. I'm with you the whole time, Big H. Uh, if you, mm. you know, I'll get up, I'll get up there with you. I had to push a Ford Ranger up the side of that mountain, essentially. We were, we were literally like behind him, making sure he didn't come backwards <laughs> oh, after Stella goodness. Point. You know that's, exactly where I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, that's what I would be afraid of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yep. what I would be afraid of. They wheeled about. him down like he was the emperor, bro. <laughs> he, there were like eight dudes wheeling Haloti down the mountain because he just had shut down. He's my man's 360 yeah. pounds, bro. It was an amazing feat. <laughs> All right, so I want to talk D line rooms. We had the same coach, Mike Waffle, who's a legend in a lot of ways. Uh, the thing that I think Mike did a really good job of, and I know that he was a good pass rush coach and that type of thing, but I think Mike let D linemen be D linemen, you know, like, and, it, and even encouraged it. So, what does being a D lineman mean to you? And what's a what's how do you build a a, a healthy D line room from an environment standpoint? Oh, I think um, that, that's, a, that's a great question. I think for us, it was just, obviously, just like you said, Mike Waffle, he just allowed us to be us. He gave us encouragement. He gave us the tools. He created competition. Did you guys have those sheets? Oh, yeah. Did he, was he still doing those production sheets? Oh, the production sheets. And we used oh, to argue yeah. over those motherfuckers, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just practice. It's yeah. a Thursday in shorts. But we're like, no, I, I, nah. you're right. Nah. <laughs> so that encourages competition it makes you work hard and then we just had so many good players right like so many of us and they just kept up kept on drafting more and more defensive linemen and we were all we like understood because you never really see where the defensive line is like the engine of the football team yeah. it's not it's not really it doesn't really happen that often in football where you know it's usually the quarterback or maybe it's a running back or maybe it, but it, like for us, for so many years, it was the defensive line. Like the team would go as the defensive yeah. line went. And so knowing that and knowing that responsibility and we just go in the room, we man, we'd have a, a blast in there, man. It was probably the most fun I've ever had in my life going to work. Like I didn't want to miss work. I wanted yeah. to be in that, in that, you know, locker room in those meeting rooms because the door would close and we would just go nuts. Like sometimes... <laughs> You know, Waffle would be up there saying things, and we'd be making fun of him. We'd be throwing shit at him. It, it was, yeah. dudes it was on like their, a dudes real on their suit. phones taking breaks. Like Waffle <laughs> understood that, like to keep D linemen happy and focused, because we're all fucked up a little bit. Like, or else we wouldn't yep. be in that room. You have to let us be children to a degree, and it's also yep. when you're running a four man front, 
And I don't know how, how many variations and fire zones you guys had. I mean, certainly we had some calls that we had to keep track of, especially when Greg Williams was there. But like, it was go. You know, it was it was all yeah. about dictating to the offense instead of the offense dictating to us. And we would try to be three yards in the backfield. And that was the key to our job. So it was like, if we're going to be in meetings for eight hours a day, there's going to be plenty of time where we don't have shit to talk about. Why do we pretend yep. like we're doing busy work? Let's just hang out. You know, and I feel like there was a lot of that in our D-line room. And Waff did a good job of setting that tone. And when he told me about y'all's D-line room, it sounded a lot the same, just with more yep. celebrated players. How about the throne <laughs> that Strahan built is what Waff told me to ask you about. Stray did all kinds of crazy stuff, man. He had like a throne. He had like a golden mic for when we would have our rap battles. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like our, our room was nuts, man. It, it was, there, there was nothing like it. And um, people ask me all the time if I miss football. It's not really football I miss. Yeah. I don't really miss football. It's, it's those, you know, being in that environment with those people who are very similar to you mentally, and, you know, just being around those people, you, you can never get that back. And that's what I miss the most. Who was the best rapper in the D line room? Who was the best freestyler in the D line room? Oh, it was hands down. It was me. I had a rap battle <laughs> against Michael Strahan, and I, I finished him off. I finished Strahan <laughs> off. It was the most epic rap battle in New York Giants history. They brought the running backs in. They brought people. They brought other people in to come witness this freestyle Friday between me and Stray. And it, it was it was it was a slaughter. Straight Stray got so upset, right? Because he didn't know that I went home and I wrote down my raps. Like I came prepared. <laughs> like, so he thought we're freestyling, but I came with like real ammunition against him, right? He, he was dipset. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I was for sure Jada Kiss. For sure. <laughs> um, all right. So, you know, you had the chop club, cleanest chop club mm. in the history of the game. Right here. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, not I blowing smoke. That, you know that, like, I mean, just an art form with the stutter and Big the way facts. you could actually, like, step on somebody's toes without looking like you're telegraphing it and then pop back mm. outside. Down to, like, being able to clear the back arm. Like, some people will chop mm. a club. and not, Everything you did was, was, like, it was technician. How do you coach guys in a D-line room to not have to do the same shit? Because Strahan's not a chop club guy. You know, just yep. like you don't do the stuff he did. And I think Watts mm -hmm. did a good job of, of kind of encouraging guys to be themselves. Do you feel like when you're coaching a young player, like, and you have advice for him, like, do you tell him to do what's good for him or do you try to force something that you know on him? Like, if you're a vet. Can't, 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 force, can't force something that you know on the guy. But the one thing about the Chop Club is it's, quite frankly, it's a very simple move, right? It's, yeah. it's really simple in its concept and it's, it's quite simple to execute that move if you know that like the little technical points. So everybody can really do that move. And quite frankly, you see damn near everybody, you know, executing it right now. Yeah. But the thing is, there's just so many different things. Like Strahan had that power rush, right? Yeah. Now we'd get in the weight room and I was just as strong as Stray. Like yeah. literally, I might have even been like a little stronger. But on the field, the way he would do that move, the way he, he had the ability to sink his hips, right? Yeah. And like really get into you and lift you. I would try that and I, I, it was like I was trying to, you know, push like, you know, a, a thousand pound, right. you know, wall of concrete. Like I couldn't do it like him because I wasn't built the way he was. Right. And so you have to understand like different defensive linemen are built differently. Yeah. Dwight Freeney with that spin move. Oh my goodness. Like I would try to do that spin move. Like I had speed like Freeney, but the way he would do that move, no, nobody can do that move just like him. Yeah. But it's because of the way he was built. Like he, you know, he was like a little lower to the ground, lower center of gravity. He can spin with like such velocity that most people just can't do. So I would try to do the, the spin and I would just get caught up in like the crab. Right. You know the crab is, I right? I know the crab. So, yeah, the, so, yeah. Yo, that's the worst position in football for a D lineman when you've got an old lineman with his hands around your hips and you're you're facing the other way and you're just trying to dance out from it. The There's worst. a fucking quarterback back there doing this. Everybody else is rushing. It's the worst, bro. It's so bad, dude. So, it's horrible. So I'll try that spin and I'll, I'll get crabbed. So you have to know, like, you know, different people have just different moves. Kiwanuka, long arm, long Jason arm. Taylor, that long arm. My arms weren't, I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't do that move because I wasn't built like that. So as a good defensive line coach, you have to understand what, what characteristics these players have and you have to try to coach them around that. 
Who are guys that you watch now that you're like, these guys are technicians and I like watching them rush? Oh, it's literally one guy for me. And that's that kid out of, in um in Los Angeles, Bosa. Bosa! Uh, Joey, Joey yeah. Bosa. Fuck yeah. I, tra- I train with I th- Joey. That's it. Oh, that's my it. God. Yeah. When you talk oh about God. technique, that's yeah. it. Yeah. That's it. Funny, funny thing is, like, I, I went, I went to train uh, Joey. This is when he when he came out of um when he came out of college, yeah. right? And so I went to Florida, and I I was there Tony, just one Tony day. Vellani. And yeah, Tony Vellani. Exactly, I was there. Exactly. I think you were there. <laughs> <laughs> nasty Nate was there. <laughs> Big nasty Nate. Lit Chris. I, I I swear to you, five minutes in. Five minutes in, I was like, oh, this guy's a superstar, right? Yeah. It's just he has he has. You know, he was he was just different than everybody else there. He, he was just different, man. Just his movement, his hand usage, the way he he could bend. It was it was it was weird to look at, right? Like, cause when you're a good player and you see like you see somebody who's just physically at that age coming out of college, just you know, just just, just gifted. But right? the thing I like about him is so, he has five um, yeah, counters. He's good. Five counters. Yep. Yep. And he doesn't yep. plan. It's like he doesn't plan things. He's never like. I don't feel like he ever corners himself where, you know, there's some rushes that that hit for for power, if you know what I mean. Like mm. they're gonna have eight bad rushes, and two of them mm. are gonna be home runs, and everybody's gonna be like all about that guy. But Joey's hitting the home runs and he's hitting for average. He's always yep. around the quarterback. He's never just blocked. You know, if he goes yeah. long arm and you sit on it, he's got something else. If he goes spin and he's out, oh yeah, he's popping right back out and doing something else. Mm. A swipe, mm. he misses a swipe. He's got something else. He can go to power if he misses a swipe. I think it's – I'm really glad you said him because a lot of fans yeah. you, you argue with, they don't understand how good Joey Bosa is. So you heard it here. Mm. You heard but it Yeah, here. They, they don't understand, man. And watch, it, watch his pad level. Watch how – like if you're watching tape of him, you won't even see You won't even see his numbers. Yeah. Like his numbers are low. You can't – he makes it a way in which it's almost impossible to block him. Like he gives you no surface. His hands are active. He's doing – you know he's got a move. He's got a counter move, like Chris said. It's just, it's it's fantastic to watch, man. If I was gonna be like, teach, you could tell like this guy's been pass rushing since maybe he was like six, seven years old, yeah, that's right? Pretty cool like deal. you can tell the way he plays. <laughs> yeah, he's been pass rushing forever. So yeah. I would encourage more more defensive linemen to watch him and see what he does. If OCU and York could have one physical asset, you know, you talked or attribute, you talked about like not having long arms or whatever. Like for mm. me, I wish I had better ankle flexion. Like, mm. what What do you think is the main thing that you wish you had that you didn't? Because we, we know what, what our weaknesses are. I always yeah. feel like I think yeah. that's as important as knowing what your strengths are. I feel like, I, you know, yeah. if you, if you kind of eliminate the things that you don't do well, then you don't have fucked up rushes trying to do what you're not. Kind of like what we were just talking yeah. about. Yeah. I would say for me it would be like, you know how, like, when you're about to bull rush, like, some defensive linemen, they can, like, bend their hips and, like, yeah. really get up under Straight offensive ass. linemen? Yeah, I, I was I was never able to do that. Like, I would feel like I'm bending, but it would just be, like, my, my upper body would be bending. I wouldn't be bending from the yes. hips. Yes, yes. Y- yeah, I know like exactly really what you mean. Get up under. I know exactly <laughs> what you mean. Because it's so true, like, and Waff used to be, like, Strahan used to just lift people up. You just got to get low and lift them. I'm like, hey man, I'm not built that way. You know what I mean? I'm built like that. I just yeah. think I just think everybody, if rushers know what their weaknesses are, it can really help. Um, but you didn't have a lot of them. 85 sacks, 11 years, amazing career. You're watching a lot of your teammates at this point go into the Hall of Fame. I'm watching guys yeah. that I play with now, maybe getting in the Hall soon. It's like it's crazy. It's kind of surreal. Yeah. But you got yeah. your, your quarterback. You talked about the D line kind of defining those runs, but he was also he stepped up big. And yeah. there's always an argument: is he a Hall of Famer or not? I'm sure you've answered this. What's your take on the mm-hmm. whole thing? Ooh, from, from a personal standpoint, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Because I like I was there and I saw some of the things that this guy did, he, he man, he put us on his back in yeah. several situations, never flustered, fantastic football player. Right. So from that standpoint, being there, I'm like, of course he should be in the hall of fame. Of course he's going to get in the hall of fame, yeah. but you know, out here, I'm also an analyst, right? Like that's, yeah. that's, that's like my job. Like I'm an analyst. So I put my analyst hat on and I say to myself, okay, was Eli Manning a better quarterback than you were a defensive end OC? And I'm like, I don't know. No. And I'm definitely not a Hall of Famer, right? So well, if, you're if being you're humble, by, I think I think 
Yeah, no, no, it's closer no, no, no. than you. I'm it's closer hoping. than you think. It's closer than you think. I, yeah, go ahead. I, I appreciate it, Chris. Yeah. I, I really do appreciate yeah. that. But yeah. you're, you're speaking from like a defensive end. Like you're like, yeah, we're, you we're watch me, right? Yeah, we're, we're into it. Yeah, we're into it. Yeah, <laughs> it's different, yeah. right? So um, from that standpoint, I'm like, no, no, I wasn't. I'm not. Really, I'm not going to get in the Hall of Fame, and I, I don't think he was a better, you know, quarterback than I was a defensive end. So from that standpoint, I'm like, I don't know, but. Overall, should he get in without a shadow of a doubt, man? Two-time Super Bowl champ, two-time MVP, you know, a great person, great individual, great player. When it mattered most, he showed up. Yeah. So for those reasons alone, he should be in the Hall of Fame. I think it's funny because we had this whole conversation about Julian Edelman, and, like, my take is I love Jules, and he's an awesome player, but, you know, like, I just think the Hall of Fame, we got to decide what it is. Is it, right. you know, and the only, is it like this guy stepped up big every time he was asked to in the, in the postseason, but there's also a lot of guys who didn't get that opportunity for a lot of their career, you know, wide receivers and such. And, um, mm. but I think the biggest thing is when you weigh like an Eli in the same vein with maybe his regular season stuff wouldn't get him in. It definitely wouldn't. Yep. But, yep. but I do think there's an exemption for quarterbacks and that's the only position that I can weigh your postseason prowess on the level that will get you into the hall. I'm not gonna do that for a wide out. I'm not gonna do that for an offensive lineman. Well, you wouldn't be able to record stats. A defensive lineman mm. that didn't have the stats in the regular season and had five sacks in a Super Bowl run. You gotta have all of it to be a position player. But I agree yeah. with you. I think Eli's in. What do you think, Nate? Um, I think he's in. Um, I think Ooh. he's in for, for, the fact, <laughs> for the fact of, just like you guys said, Two rings and then two MVPs. Um, how many guys are in the hall quarterbacks that that have that? So I, I've, I'm just looking at it for a spectrum that way. And everybody that played with him loved him. I mean, well, it seemed to be <clears throat> like I feel like he took more shit outside the locker room than in. And the believe it or not, I think this matters. But his dad and his brother is in the, are in there. Yeah. So I feel the, like the, that the trio. I feel like just for the story that <laughs> might hold a little weight. Yeah, yeah. Whether they are on the fence about it, it's kind of like, hey, this looks good for us. Let's throw them in. But for the stats wise, I, we can go back and forth all day if they if they're gonna match. How, how crazy is that though? Like that, when you think about that, how <laughs> his yeah. father and his bro the Hall of Fame. Nuts, like, what are we dude. talking about here? It's nuts. For a dad, oh my God. for somebody with a dad in the Hall of Fame, like and, and two sons that aren't going to make it, but had great careers or whatever. Like we, yep. it's just you feel like, man, it would have been tough for all. Like just the gravity of like, how do you do that? And f and yeah. quarterback's not even a really genetic position. I don't think of it that way. I think it's all taught. about like skill and it's taught. Yeah. So that's crazy. I've got a greater honor. Yeah. There are five jerseys that hang in my closet, all purchased when I was in my early 20s, and worn, mm. paid for with real money. OC, rank these in terms of coolness. Lawrence okay. Taylor, Eli mm. Manning, Tiki mm. Barber, Plexico mm -hmm. Burris, OC mm. Umanura. Mm. Ooh, my guy, bro. See that he, he, was, hey, listen, I he was holding that. his breath. I appreciate like, that. I appreciate love that, is love that, that. That's real. Love is love. Yeah, that's real. He that's read, real. The, he that's read real, that man. on a Jada Kiss post, I think, and he picked it up last week because <laughs> no. we were explaining <laughs> to him what verses was, and he was looking at the post like, "Love is love." I think I'll try that. <laughs> right? Let, no, no, that's that's that, that that's real right there, man. Because you know, I had my name was Umenyora, like I was like African, right? So it's like for you to actually support support me like that that that's um that that means a lot to me it really does i appreciate it would ltb um, to would, your question, would ltb have to be one <laughs> yeah I, I would say you would, in terms of coolness you would have to go you'd have to go lt and then from lt you would have to go plex go because man plex plex is that guy right <laughs> yeah. plex is my dude right um and then after plex go then i think you go you'd have to go with me um, I think TQ would probably be fifth. I, don't <laughs> I knew that would be the case. Because yeah. you got to put the quarterback. <laughs> oh. Eli and TQ, for sure. Oh, see, you mean, oh, did see, you just break news? Is it Umanura? Are we? Have we all been saying yeah. it wrong? Yeah, it's actually Umanura. Oh. Yeah. That's fucking crazy, dude. Wow. Yeah. More yeah, breaking news. It is. He's just yeah. breaking news left and right. Well, he loves this show. <laughs> we gotta have him on again. OC Umanyora. OC Umanyora. It's 11, 15 yeah. years longer. I sat in my dorm room and watched him beat somebody on the Eagles for five sacks. I'll never forget where I was. I was sitting there. It was there in six, college. Chris. It was six. Six sacks. <laughs> six sacks. <laughs> That's just ridiculous. Is, was that the, the most like immortal you've ever felt that night? 
No, oddly enough. There was a game I played in 2006 against the Carolina Panthers. I hit the quarterback 11 times. He didn't, <laughs> the guy, and the guy was a good player. He didn't block me once the entire yeah. game. And I had zero sacks. Now, <laughs> how's that? How is that? Jordan you, Gross? Man? Was it Jordan Gross? Jordan Gross. It was Jordan hey, Gross. Hey, listen, and here's the quarterback hits. That's another thing is like sometimes the best rushers don't always get all the sacks. And he was always yeah. terrorizing people with pressures and hits. In the Super Bowl, in fact, on Strahan's last sack, he had a really clean rush. And I know this because yeah. I've been in this position a lot when you rush with like Robert Quinn and all these motherfuckers that get there a little bit faster. But he was <laughs> he was a terror in that game and didn't get a sack, right? Yeah. Yep, yep, exactly. That drives exactly. you crazy. Like, out the high. Yeah, it drives you nuts. crazy. Nuts, nuts, well, nuts. And then we play against Philly, and I had six sacks, and I only get – those are the only six times I got to the quarterback the whole game. Right, well, right? Okay, it's, it's still it's, only it's, six. It's That's only six. Uh, <laughs> OC, appreciate you, man. We hope to have you back again, and, uh, and, and, and loved having you. Anytime, man. Thank you guys hey, so much. Good this talking awesome. to you, yeah, bro. Great seeing you. Big nasty <laughs> Nick. <laughs> See you, bro. See ya.